Newton's third law states that whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, and this can be a repulsive force or an attractive force, the first body experiences a force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the force that it exerts. So imagine we have two fishing boats and they're at rest next to each other on a lake. If someone in boat one pushes against boat two, both boats will experience an equal force pushing them apart and these forces will be pointing in opposite directions. So if our boats, along with those on board, are of equal mass, both boats will accelerate away in opposite directions by the same amount. But for example, if boat 2 has more mass than boat 1, boat 2 will have a smaller acceleration compared to boat 1. But this doesn't mean the forces on both boats are not equal. They are in fact equal and opposite. It's just that from Newton's second law, the same force will accelerate an inertial mass by differing amounts depending on the size of the mass. And we can see this from Newton's second law here. So the boat with the larger mass will have a lower acceleration. So this force that boat 1 exerts on boat 2, we can call this the action force. And the force of boat 2 pushing back on boat 1 would then be called the reaction force. The action force is equal in magnitude to the reaction force and opposite in direction. And also the action and reaction force must act on separate objects. In other words, forces never operate in isolation. And lastly, the force must be of the same type. So let's look at another example of Newton's third law. We have a coffee mug at rest on a table. One of our objects of interest is the coffee mug. The other is the table, and the coffee mug and the table is our system of interest. How can we describe this system using Newton's third law? So in Newton's third law, we have an action force and a reaction force that have the same size but point in opposite directions, and they act on two separate bodies. So our coffee mug is exerting a force on our tabletop. But what is this force? Well, according to classical physics, the Earth exerts a gravitational force on all objects, including our coffee mug here. And this force is equal to the gravitational mass of the coffee mug multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which on the Earth's surface is around 9.8 meters per second squared. This can represent our action force. But again, according to Newton's third law, if our coffee cup exerts a force on our table, the table must exert an equal force on our coffee mug, but in the opposite direction. And this force is called the normal force, a reaction force. Let's finish off with one last example. If we take this coffee mug off the desk and accidentally drop it, as it's falling to the ground, what now are the two objects in this system? So here, our system has changed. The table is now irrelevant to our problem. We have the coffee mug, which is one object, and the entire Earth is the second object. But we still have two equal forces that act in opposite directions. We have the attractive force of the Earth, in other words, the gravitational force of the Earth acting on the mug. But again, according to Newton's third law, we must also have an equal and opposite force coming from a second object. In our case, that is the gravitational force the mug exerts on the Earth. So the force of gravity from the Earth could be our action force, and our reaction force could be a gravitational force exerted on the Earth by the mug. So whenever you drop something, not only will the object accelerate towards the ground, but the Earth will also have a small acceleration in the upward direction towards whatever object that's undergoing freefall. And we can also use Newton's second law here to find out what this upward acceleration would be. So we know that due to Newton's third law, that both the action and reaction forces are equal in magnitude. Newton's second law is the relationship of force the inertial mass and the resultant acceleration. If our coffee mug weighs 0.3 kilograms, 
We can rearrange this equation here with the mass of the Earth to find out that the acceleration upwards is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 25 meters per second squared, which is vanishingly small. Now, as a side note, when you start to learn about relativity, you'll find out that gravity is not actually a force. And our falling mug here is not in fact accelerating. But if you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend Veritasium's video on why gravity is not force. And he doesn't specifically talk about Newton's laws, but you'll be able to spot them in action, especially in his rocket scenes. So make sure you have a look at his video and try and spot where Newton's laws apply in his video.